The fundamental concept we will be presenting today is that gymnast firms expanded plant distributions into previously uninhabited dry environments, further altering their carbon cycle. This was a major step in the evolution of plants. One of the fundamental things we observe with gymnast firms is that they sustained or maintained the alternation of generations, but they did it without the need for water. And that was the transformational event because it allowed plants to exploit new habitats on Earth. As we learned from previous lectures, all plants follow the alternation of generations with a haploid generation and a diploid generation. If this were the class, we would go through the following clicker questions, one through five, with pointing to make sure that students understand the gametophytic stage and the sporophytic stage of the alternation of generations in plants. It's also important to recognize that there's an evolutionary trend as we go from the earlier lines, such as liverworts and mosses, to the more derived lines, the gymnosperms, and eventually, as we'll talk about in the next lecture, angiosperms. In this transition, we've gone from a stage in which the gametophyte is the predominant form of the life cycle and it's photosynthetic, down to in the gymnosperms and angiosperms where the gametophyte is no longer photosynthetic and it, it's a, uh, it comprises a very small fraction of the life cycle. Instead, the photosynthetic tissue in the more derived forms, such as gymnosperms, is going to be the sporophyte. And it is a long, occupying a longer phase of the life cycle than is the sporophyte in the very earlier lines, such as the liverworts and mosses. What we see here, if we begin to look at this tree from the earlier lines to the more derived lines, is that we've moved from a mechanism of dispersal and fertilization uh, that moved away from water. In the liverworts, mosses, and green algae, fertilization takes place in water. Whereas in the more derived lines, the sperm is enclosed within pollen, and so it's transported in a dry matter. Similarly, when we begin to look at the dispersal, the dispersal in the earlier taxa is through water, whereas the dispersal in the more derived forms is through air as spores. So what we see are some evolutionary trends, evolutionary trends of moving away from water and moving towards air for fertilization and dispersal of the, um, of the seed or the uh, spore as a result of reproduction. So again, in the alternation of uh, generations, now let's consider a, sperm, a uh, gymnosperm. We have a gametophytic stage. In that gametophytic stage, we have uh, spores that are formed. Those spores become the gametophytes. They land on a female structure called an ovule where there's an egg and this transfer of the pollen to the surface where it germinates and then grows to the egg is all part of the haploid part of the alternation of generations. After we have the fertilization to form the diploid, that diploid develops into a seed which then can be a resting stage or it can germinate to now go through the adult phase of the sporophyte, and then we complete the cycle. Pollen grains have to germinate to form sperm. Fertilization, though, in gymnosperms is on a naked seed, that is that the egg and ovule are exposed to air. Okay, had this been class, we would have gone through several clicker questions. Now this dispersal of pollen is really an amazing thing to see. In Utah, if you go up to the mountains in late May and early June, 
what you'll often see are these clouds, masses of pollen spores that are being shed. Here you see them at the tip of a conifer branch. And that, that uh, pollen then lands here on the female tree. And we then have a germination of that pollen grain, which then grows towards this, the female egg and completes the fertilization to create a diploid zygote. As I had mentioned uh, earlier, there are some clear evolutionary trends in the alternation of generation between the gametophytic and sporophytic stages. In the algae and bryophytes, the gametophyte is the primary stage of the, uh, the primary form of the organism. It's the photosynthetically active component. By the time we get to the gymnosperms, the ferns, the gymnosperms, what we find is that the sporophyte is not really very photosynthetic in the, the gymnosperms. It's the, uh, the, I'm sorry, the gametophyte is not very photosynthetic. It's the sporophyte which is photosynthetic. And we go from a free living, for, uh, a free living photosynthetic algae involved in fertilization to forms that are not free living. They're heterotrophic and they're involved in external fertilization in gymnosperms and what's called internal fertilization as we'll talk about in the next lecture, rangiosperms. So there's a shift from the dominant form of life being a gametophyte, gametophytic form in algae bryophytes and lycophytes to I'm sorry, in algae and bryophytes, to the sporophyte being the dominant form when we get into the lycophytes, ferns, gymnosperms, and angiosperms.